Hey there everybody, how's it going? My name is Brandon Brashears. In this video, we're gonna talk about what a marketing funnel is and how you can use it to grow your business. What's up everybody? In this video, it's going to be a very general overview of funnels and how to use them to grow your business. A funnel is made up of three parts. We have the top of the funnel, which is awareness. We have the middle of the funnel, which is evaluation. And then the bottom of the funnel, which is conversion and reconversion. So we're gonna use that framework to talk about how to create funnels for your business. And we're gonna do some general overview of what the most effective way to create a funnel is and how to use all of these elements to grow your business. Before we get into that though, real quick here, my name is Brandon Brashears and this is the Digital Marketing Madman channel. I create daily marketing videos that help you to grow your business through digital marketing. So if you are trying to get more sales, more leads, more awareness of your brand, be sure to subscribe so that you can get tips and tricks on how to increase your business with digital marketing. So what is a funnel? Well, funnel is basically exactly like what it sounds like, right? With the funnel, you have a large top, which will then funnel more people into evaluation and then into conversion. And so a marketing funnel is set up to do the exact same thing. What we're trying to do is put people through the funnel and direct them down to a certain outcome. So you might have a landing page, which is part of your funnel. You might have a web page, which is part of your funnel. You might have an ad. There's a bunch of tools that you can use to create funnels. But if you understand the general principles, you're going to be able to use whatever tool is going to work best for your specific business. Unfortunately, there's not a one size fits all to digital marketing. There's going to be things that work really good for you and things that don't work so well. And so it's important to understand the concepts behind all of these things so that you can then take these concepts and apply them. The other thing that's crazy about digital marketing is it is changing every single day. There's constantly new ad formats that are coming out. There's new ways to reach people. There's new ways to message. It just is changing all the time and it can feel really overwhelming. So don't get caught up in those technical details. Just stay as, as much up to date as you possibly can. But ultimately, understanding the principles behind what makes marketing work and how funnels work is going to help you to apply any kind of new tool that comes out into your funnel and create basically marketing systems that help to drive people through the funnel and turn them into customers. So just like a, a funnel has a large top and then it goes down to a very smaller point, that's basically what we're trying to do here. Anytime you're on the internet and you have clients that are on like social media platforms or searching on Google or doing all of these different activities, what you're trying to do is to segment and identify groups of people who are going to be interested in what you're offering, either your service or your product or your brand. If you're trying to maybe like grow a YouTube channel or doing any kind of marketing, right? You're trying to attract people who are going to engage with your brand and complete a specific object, objective. So marketing funnels should be set up that you have one end goal in mind. In my opinion, when you create a funnel, you're typically gonna to wanna to have one specific outcome. And typically we start with that outcome in mind. So what is it that you want to be doing and what do you want the end goal of your clients or customers to be? And having that in mind is going to help you to engineer the funnel that you want and help you to get the action that you want them to take. So many times I hear people say marketing, doing digital marketing or social media marketing, there's just no ROI, it doesn't work. And a lot of times the problem with that is people are putting out posts and they're creating content and they're doing all of this work, but ultimately there's no end goal in mind. They're just hoping by putting out a sheer volume of, of content that they're going to attract the right people and those people are going to automatically say, okay, this is great. What else do they have to offer? I wanna buy their products and services. The truth is, unless you have the offer in mind, what you create at the top of the funnel to generate awareness is not going to be as effective. So there's two ways to start here. We can either engineer an offer that we know is going to hopefully convert. And usually when you're creating offers, it's going to take some kind of testing and trial period because ultimately you don't know for sure what your cold traffic or different traffic sources are going to respond to. If you already have an offer that your customers and clients love, that's typically the better place to start. So if you're starting from scratch, you're just gonna to have to guess. Or if you have a business that's established, understanding what those people really, really want ultimately and what your unique selling proposition is, it's gonna help you get so further along than if you're just starting from scratch. Now, I made a video about the three questions that you need to ask before you run any kind of ad campaign. So if you haven't watched that yet, pause this video and go check that out on this card right now. But assuming that you know what the pain points of your clients or prospective clients are, what problems you're going to be solving for them and how you're gonna solve those problems, 
Assuming that you know that, we're going to reverse engineer it. So ultimately, at each stage of the funnel, there's different types of objectives that are going to be appropriate for that stage of the funnel. I'm going to do an in-depth video on each stage of the funnel, so top level awareness, middle level evaluation, and then bottom level conversion. But really understanding what that bottom level conversion is going to be is where you need to start. So I think that a lot of times people get confused about what their marketing should really be doing because they make it seem like digital marketing somehow is different than actual human behavior. You have to remember now that people that you're dealing with online are the same people that you deal with if you're offline. So human behavior is human behavior. When you're thinking about creating funnels, you should be thinking that just like when you meet somebody, you don't go and try and sell them something right away. There is times when you would sell somebody something right away, um, for sure. But depending on what your offer is and what your product is, you're going to want to warm them up. If you're trying to turn strangers into customers, typically the best way is not going about that by shouting offers at them. You need to introduce yourself, get them aware of you. Then after they're aware of you, you're going to give them some ability to take the next step. Once they've taken that next step, then you're going to give them offers to purchase products that they're going to be interested in. The difference here is that we're using all of the content that we create and that you should be creating to segment your different lists and audience and then hopefully retarget people. As marketing becomes more and more competitive, your content creation becomes more important than ever. Content is how you segment your audience and it's how you create lists of people to sell offers to. If you are good at creating content that's built for a specific purpose and for a specific audience, you're going to be able to convert a lot easier. I'll give you an example. So let's say you are a veterinary hospital and you only are a cat clinic and you only work with cat clients, right? So if you create content that's dog related, sure, that those are pet owners who are maybe have a cat, but ultimately the content that you should be creating should only be relevant to the cat offers that you have because you don't do work on dogs or bunnies or turtles or frogs. So Knowing who your end offer is for is really, really important. And ultimately, you want to create content that's going to be that be for that person. So for awareness, for example, these are the kind of blog posts and content that are just more general. Typically, things like pictures and memes and just videos, content that's native, and it just basically is trying to get the person to engage with that piece of content. At this stage, we're not trying to sell things necessarily. Now, I will say that it's different for sure if you are targeting AdWords um, that have bottom of funnel intent, right? So you're trying to target strangers. For example, let's say you're a plumber and it's in the middle of the night, somebody's searching for a roto cleaner, right? They need their, their drain is backing up and they have poop flowing into their house and they need somebody right now. At this point, they just want somebody who's going to show up and not charge them like thousands and thousands of dollars. But unless they are able to come and do this right now, they don't care who it is, right? So they don't need to see the top level type content. Right, so that depends on your product and service. Are there people searching for bottom of funnel activities that need your product and service right now? Because if there are, then you might not have to go through the process of creating funnels that have the awareness and evaluation. But if you're trying to use things like Facebook and Instagram and other social media channels, you're probably gonna wanna create awareness content. The reason for that is people are on Facebook and Instagram using this platform not to go and find products and services to buy. They're there to check up on their friends and family and see what their coworkers are doing and they're basically hanging out there. So the content that you're creating for each platform is going to be need to be platform specific. And we're going to dive further into that in other videos here. So be sure to subscribe because we'll be talking about that. But that's definitely a, a video on its own for sure. So awareness content should be light and engaging. You're just trying to get people to get interested in it. And again, it needs to be relevant to the target group that you are targeting. So what are the things that they are thinking about? What are their pain points? What are their troubles? What are their worries? How can you create content that solves questions and answers, answers those questions around those pain points and those worries and those troubles? It doesn't have to be so heavy, but it can be fun and engaging too. Um, but really think about what is it that they're, they're looking for and what's the conversation that they're having right now? So if you're a plumber, for example, and you wanted to be engaging people, you could talk about the 10 signs that your plumbing is going out. And then you could have 10 symptoms of things that, you know, things are going to go bad here. They're going to have a slab leak soon, or they're going to have need to repipe, or, you know, whatever it is that you're doing based on your specific business. This is going to be specific to you. And ultimately, you know what your customers want and need probably better than anyone else. So think about what their main pain points are 
And be sure to go through that video where I talk about those three questions that you answer before you get started doing any ads because it's very, very relevant and important to this section. So once somebody is engaged with your brand and your content, what's the next step? Usually that involves following you on social media channels, uh, opting in for a newsletter special, opting in for a coupon club, trying to take the next level. Just like it when you meet somebody in, in real life, if you went up and you wanted to get a date with somebody, you wouldn't just go and propose to them you would say, hey, would you like to go grab some coffee? So this is a low risk offer. Typically you're not selling anything. Sometimes you can sell things, but usually it's a low purchase price and it's basically like an amazing deal. The things that I like to use for evaluation are lead magnets. Um, I like to use newsletter opt-ins. I like to have people follow social media channels, sign up for newsletters, things like that. At this stage, we're trying to build them, build up the, the relationship and help them to take the next step. And usually, again, it's a lower kind of risk-free trial or entry-level product or, or entry-level download or something like that to help them to take the next step. So finally, we have people that have expressed interest and are engaging with our content. We have people that are opting in and following our social channels. And then at the bottom, it's time to start making offers. You are not going to sell product and you're not gonna be able to generate ROI if you don't make offers, people need to know how to take the offer. So at the bottom of the funnel, what we do is we present them offers and we present them ways to take that offer. Can't tell you how many times people build up email lists that I work with. They're just sending out emails and they say, hey, we're doing things at our practice or at our business. And then they don't offer a way for the, the email recipient to take that offer. It is so important that you have a call to action that's clear and that you've defined the way that you want people to take action. Typically, it's best for you when you make that action as easy as possible. So if you're selling things on Facebook, integrating your Shopify account with Facebook so people can natively purchase inside of Facebook makes it a lot easier. Anytime you take things that are more complicated and you ask people to do more work, your conversion rate is going to go down. So make it as simple as possible for people to take action. If you're trying to get people to book appointments or get, take you up on a special offer and you're sending out emails, sometimes it's as easy as saying, hey, re respond to this email and we'll send you the details or we'll schedule an appointment. You don't have to make it complicated and funnels don't have to be difficult. In fact, the more simple that they are, typically the more effective that they are. So don't get overwhelmed, but think about this first. Start with the end in mind. What is the offer that you're going to be putting out there? Number the, the step above that is how can you engage people in who will be interested in that offer ultimately? And then on top of that, what kind of content can you produce around a lead magnet and an offer that would get people segmented who are going to be really interested in what you have to sell? So I know that this is a little bit complicated. We're going to deep dive into each one of these funnel stages so that you can really get a great understanding. Be sure to subscribe to this channel to get a future videos. And if there's ever anything that I can do to help, please be sure to comment below or send me an email. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.